Well, we made it. July 11th. Made it through yesterday. I think I only cried two or three times. Just remembering <clears throat> what happened. But today is a new day. And it's mom's birthday. Is she alive? Yes, she is. Right here. She's also alive in my younger brother Mark's heart and my older brother's time. I seen a lot when I was home two years ago. I seen where time showed love and gratitude. He showed more love to dad than what I could ever muster. I gotta respect him for that. My younger brother's the same way. Mark's got a love for dad that beats me hands down. But us boys love mom. Mom's life I really don't know that much about. However, I do know that when she was seven, I might as well say that she witnessed her father's suicide. I told you in a previous video <coughs> concerning the gun that the man used. Mom wanted me to get it out. Get it out of the police station. The evidence locker. I wouldn't do it. Didn't see the sense in it. I don't know if Tom got it or if Mark's got it. You know, that's... To me, just... Why bother? You know. But Mom, to me... She came from a woman by the name of Hazel Soper. Hazel was a redhead and full of life. If she had a pistol, there wouldn't be a handle on it. And every man that had sex with her, Chip it. <laughs> There'd be no handle. We got names for people like that. Whore, slut. But that was my grandmother. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think my mom seen her mother in me. And I think that's what created the special bond between Mom and I. Because I loved her mother. And I think I loved her mother more than what Mom did. But Mom never showed it. Mom never showed hatred. Mom always had good to say about everybody. I knew that she had very few clothes during the time I was growing up. But what I did not realize was for probably 14 years she wore the exact same dress every Sunday to church. Looking back on that, all I have to do is say honor. Because mom put us children first. I'm not going to say we all had brand new clothes each and every time that we needed them. No, I won't say that. But she kept us in clothes and she kept the clothes up. 
we had enough clothes that we did not have to wear the same thing for more than a day. I remember having enough shirts that I could <laughs> wear a shirt every day of the week. A different shirt, a different pair of pants. Mom made sure of that. She also made sure that we were clean and our clothes were clean and well kept. I recall one time and I bought it with my own money from shoveling snow. When the Beatles came out they had Beetle boots. Mom allowed me to buy a pair of Beetle boots. At that time they were a size 7 and they fit perfect. She probably thought it was just going to be a trend. But the next pair of shoes that I bought were nine and a half wide. And I took off the Beetle Boots, size 7. And my next shoes were nine and a half wide. Interesting. You know, pure interesting. Anyway, those um, years of growing up, Mom was always there. She didn't start work until I left. She got a part-time job, which turned into a full-time which turned into a debate between her and Esther Ladd concerning that clerk's job. Mom got the clerk's job. But Mom never said anything bad about Esther Ladd. And I asked Mom about that one time in Monk's Corner. And mom just looked at me. And she said, it's just not in me. Interesting. Before the fire department moved, mom was working in the clerk's office. And this happened part time. My mom was a beautiful lady. physically beautiful. I don't recall the man's name. It just happened while I was still home. The guy came in, sat in a chair talking to mom concerning his taxes. Took out his crank and started jacking it in front of my mom. Mom didn't say anything, she just got up and left the room. Went down, the police came in, took the man away. I don't think Mom charged him. I don't know if she did or not. Because I can't see my mom charging anybody. Mom always had good words to say about Hazel. She also had very good words to say about Ann, Chuck's wife, Grandpa's wife. But I never seen it. I never seen it in Ann as being good. After Mom got the clerk's job, I had a different view of Esther Ladd. How could somebody do that? How can you work with somebody and then discredit them when they're trying to get the job that you had? You taught the person how to do the job and then you discredit them. 
knowing that that person that you discredit is the best one for the job. Interesting how people's minds go. But after mom got the job, she started buying clothes for the job. And I believe that she wore that same dress to church for probably years after. After she could afford a different dress, she probably wore the same one. Call it stubbornness, call it uh, love. But I recall that dress. And it was a beautiful dress. But anyways, today's mom's birthday. She was born in 1927. That would have made her, what, 87, 88 years old now? It's uh, interesting. Now I make her about 89 years old now. But the thing is, Mom is still alive, and she always will be. One thing I do hope, and I pray for, is that these videos that I make will be seen by my children. My daughter had a sample of mom's love. We came home one time, and it was after Alan married Shelby. On the way going home, Chris asked me if she could see Uncle Al. And I said, yeah, we'll get to the house and call him. Well, he came over. And I recall, in the front yard, <laughs> I stayed on the porch. I sat on the steps of the porch. But I was not going to involve myself with my daughter talking to Uncle Alan and Shelby. No, not my job. Well, they were on the front yard. Alan was there, and I seen him give Chris a hug and a kiss, and they were talking, and Shelby was talking, and Al was talking, and Chris was talking. They were having a good time. Mom was at the store, but Mom drove in the driveway. <laughs> I said, well, I think I better walk over there, because I got an idea World War III is about ready to erupt. Well, I got up, and I walked over, and I'm standing next to Shelby. Mom gets out of the car, gets the bags that she bought, and she walks up, stands in the middle, looks at Alan, and says, the only reason I'm allowing you here is because my granddaughter wanted to see you. But when this visit's done, don't you dare step foot on my property again. And then she walked away. Was she mad? Fuming. Flaming mad. Did she show that she was mad? No. I can't believe that she said those words in such a normal voice you're loving that it kind of brought a smile to everybody's face including Alan because Alan agreed that he would never step foot on her property again and I think Alan has adhered to that 
because he did not stop at the house to see Dad. And I kind of expected him to, but he didn't. In honor of Mom, he didn't. Now whether he has yet or not, don't know, don't care, not my job. But today's Mom's birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. And I'm planning on staying here until 5 o'clock. Go out to dinner and have a steak dinner in honor of Mom. And like I did last year, the waitress to wait on me will also wait on a couple tonight. And I'm going to buy their meal. And they're not going to know. Because I'm going to have the waitress promise not to reveal who bought the meal. And whatever's left over from that 40 is her tip. So, with that, I'm going to end. I'm looking at about 16.30. So, happy birthday, Mom. And I still love you and honor you.